Hi guys, today I'm going to explain to you how I think Candace Owens is to blame for the myth of the white supremacy in America. Okay, so as you guys know, there has been two major shootings here in America. There's been this one with El Paso and then this one with Dayton, Ohio. Now, as you know, they both are really crucial events. They both are being labeled as white supremacy and racism and all the left are tries to throw at us. Right, AOC. So I'm just going to go into each shooting and we're going to look into each shooting quickly and then we're going to get into why and how. Candace Owens is the reason why the white supremacist rhetoric is being thrown around like candy. First thing is first, El Paso. Paso, Texas, the shooter was named Patrick Crucias. Crucias. Crucias, 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 His name is Patrick, all right, Pat. Pat was a 21 year old, he's half Mexican, and that day he killed a lot of people in the Walmart parking lot. Here's a quick little clip of one of the videos I found on Twitter. There's been a citizen bias, and the citizen bias is this. So if you guys look at the his My Life account before the shooting, this is what he was listed as. Conveniently, also, he was in El Paso, which he's not from El Paso. He was in El Paso at the same time as this, the Antifa meeting. So as you guys can see, that I think all signs lead to Antifa. And then all of a sudden, a couple of minutes later, I watched before my eyes, this happened. The public and the citizens turned him into a Republican Trump supporter. Then after that, we saw the media bias. The media bias was even crazier. The media bias was just going straight to the throat saying that he's a racist, this is white supremacy, this is a white man who was racist and he killed people because they were near the border. Well, I want you guys to know, just because they're ge geographically near the border doesn't make them a racist. Any white person is allowed to go near the border of, Amer of America. Secondly, he is half Mexican. Third of all, this boy also went and killed all them are full white. He's not. So um, he killed white people, he killed black people, and he killed Mexican people. He was not very discriminatory at all about who he shot. So... Oh, this one's really annoying. Politician bias is the most stupid one because they're the ones screaming racism and screaming Trump. Beto, I know that you didn't get that much airtime during the debates last week, but I'm sure you can get there in other ways. The fact that you're saying this is Trump's fault is really insane to me. Let's actually watch the clip of what he really said. This is really about hatred and racism. This is really about hatred and racism. This is really about hatred and racism. An intolerance that continues to grow in this country. Hate crimes on the rise for each of the last three years. Division being sown by the Democratic Party. This president out. Hatred being welcomed during his administration. All of us must stand up against this. Are you saying President Trump is indirectly responsible for this? I'm saying that President Trump has a lot to do with what happened in El Paso yesterday. It's up to all of us to put an end to this racism. It's up to all of us to put an end to this racism. It's up to all of us to put an end to this racism. Now that blows my mind that he's even trying to think that it's Trump's fault because saying that Trump's racial um, and hate, and he keeps bringing up the word racism. How was this racist? A white and Mexican man walked inside of a Walmart and killed a bunch of people that were white, Mexican, and black. He killed people that were more white than him. You're literally trying to twist this into racism, Beto Roik. That's not good. You're lying about racism. And let me tell you, white is a race. So when you guys hate on white people, you're being racist. Replace every word white with black and tell me how racist that still sounds. Just saying. Next, you blame Trump. We get it. So let's go into the next shooting. The next shooting was Dayton, Ohio by Connor Betts. So Connor Betts um, on Twitter self-describes himself as he and him. You know where this is going. Anime fan, metalhead, and leftist. Self-proclaimed. So... He, I guess, had a list in high school that he wrote on a wall of people he wanted to hit. That people he wanted to kill and hurt. And a lot of them being girls that he was um, trying to be fancy with that didn't fancy his company. So he made a secret hit list. 
Why is this important? It's not. But the media is trying to make him seem crazy and get your attention off the fact that he was an Antifa member. So, <clears throat> let's go into the media by... And in Dayton, early this morning, at least nine people were killed and 27 injured before police officers shot the gunman to death just 30 seconds after the attack began. Tonight, CBS News is learning about a hit list he created in high school. For the record, it's really weird that you're going to mention his high school hit list that none of those people who were shot tonight were even on, but you won't mention the fact that he was an Antifa. That's really fucking strange to me. We had extensive coverage of this violent weekend in America with new questions about what's being called white terrorism. And leading our coverage tonight in Dayton, Ohio, is national correspondent Dean Reynolds. It was just after one o'clock in the morning when people began to scatter on East Fifth Street, fleeing another young man with murder on his mind. We got shots fired, we got multiple people down. What are the multiple medics? I've never heard somebody got shots my entire life. It was terrifying. The shooter has been identified as 24-year-old Connor Betts of nearby Bellbrook, Ohio. That's him on Facebook, and him again early today after police ended his rampage. For about 30 seconds, though, 5th Street was a killing field, as the shooter, in armored vest and toting an assault rifle with hundreds of rounds of ammunition, opened fire on the crowds outside a bar called Ned Peppers. As it was, though, nine people were killed, including the shooter's own 22-year-old sister, Megan. All of them, mostly African American, 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 from their mid 20s to age 57, gunned down on the street or sidewalk. The media bias is just writing him off as a as a white supremacist because of the fact that six out of nine victims were black. Is that offensive to black people? It should be. It should definitely be offensive to black people because of the fact that six out of nine is not that much different than half. And um, in Dayton, Ohio, which is predominantly black people and people, especially on Fifth Street in Dayton, Ohio, it happened outside the bar of Ned Peppers. And if you guys have ever been to Dayton, Ohio, which is a predominantly black neighborhood, and in Dayton, I was actually shocked to find out that he only shot six out of nine that were black. Because um, first of all, though, how many blacks there are to me is very racist. To even say that is very racist. You should have said that he killed nine people because he did, and um, they were all different races. Just because most of them were black in a geographical location where most people there are black. That's a fact. That's going to happen. This is a fact, not an opinion. So um, they are literally trying to say six out of ten were black. That's really offensive to me that they would even say that because um, to me that's racist against black people. I mean, if you're black, how do you feel about that? That's kind of weird. All of the victims, predominantly black, were between the ages of blah, blah, blah. Are you saying that the other ones who are other colors are not as important? Why aren't you pointing out their races? There was actually somebody there, I think, that was Muslim. There's a white one. Um, there's a lot of white ones. And then there's six black. Why aren't you pointing out all the races? Why are you only pointing out black? That's concerning and that's weird. When, when will the left let go of race? Can we all just let go of race and be equal? Because that's going to bring me to my last point. So now you put both of the shootings together and realize that all this is is simply the media trying to hide the fact that both of these members are both Antifa members. They don't want to denounce Antifa. They don't want to say Antifa is a terrorist organization. They actually like Antifa. They love Antifa. They love Antifa. They love Antifa. They love the violence that Antifa brings because it also brings in their socialistic values and it also is going to ensure socialistic law on the public. That's what they like Antifa. They're Antifa's for taking away the guns yet they want to beat people up doesn't make sense to me and I don't care what you believe I don't care what you call reverse racism white is a race we come from many places if we call all Muslim people the same exact kind of Muslim you'd be mad you would say that's Islamophobic so we have to know that there's four different types of Muslims but let me tell you there's a lot of different types of white people we come from different places different creeds different backgrounds and different cultures we're allowed to celebrate our cultures we're allowed to be proud of our cultures just like you are as well and we should be leaving racism why are we bringing the world back to 1945 if you think that racism is is good then you should not hate white people because until you meet every single white person you cannot put down all white people we are a race honey we are proud of our race just like you could be proud of yours and in America we are all equal I don't see race I don't care about your color I'm gonna criticize you if you're in Congress because you are doing a fucked up job I'm talking to the squad just because you're women of color doesn't mean you're not allowed to be criticized and I'm sick of you guys claiming racism for everything you guys have watered down the situation so much to where when real racism happens nobody gives a and this is your fault 
The actual problem at hand here isn't mass shootings. The problem at hand here isn't white nationalism. The problem at here is that we have people in Congress that are openly racist. We have problem at here is we have Twitter and other um, social media boards that let people openly be racist. If we replace the words white with black, tell me, how racist would that sound? Every single tweet, every single thing they say. If you remember anything I say in this video, just know one thing. Racism is bad. Racism is bad. Racism is bad. Is bad. No matter what. But we literally have people that are extremely racist and openly racist in the public eye, in our government, and everybody's okay with this. Again, replace the word white with black and tell me still how racist it sounds. I mean, black people, how do you guys feel about the fact that they're using you guys as, as victimhood? They're saying six out of the nine are black. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. And? There's nothing else after that? Just curious, what are the other races then? Are they not important? Or why is it significant for the news to point out that six out of ten, or six out of nine were black? The kid that did the shooting was against racism. He was against the wall, he was for open borders, and he openly spoke about that. He First of all, he described himself as he and him. You know on Twitter, anybody who has their name is he, him, she, her, she, you know they're very leftist. And when did we think that racism will fix racism? You can't fucking fix racism of people of color by hating white people. That's going in a circle. You cannot segregate for equality by labeling us different labels and separating us away. You cannot uplift women by putting down men, and you cannot uplift the left by putting down the right. Know when you're being pandered to. And then think about history. When has Democrats ever done anything for black people or Hispanic people, ever? Obama sent home more illegals in our nation's history. He broke a record. Obama dropped more bombs in our nation's history, but that's not neither here nor there right now. We all need to be down to that. I'm not saying white people stick up for yourselves. I'm saying if you're American, stick up for all peoples. This includes, but it is not limited to, white people. Not one of these shootings that were race induced. Even the one in Ohio, they said, the cops straight up said, it is not a hate crime. That's my story, I'm sticking to it. If you guys want to support me, go to patreon.com slash the adorable portable. And um, if you guys want to buy any Trump 2020 gear, you guys can always go to facebook.com slash the adorable deplorable. And I appreciate every single buddy, every single person that's been helping me get to all these places. I do have a lot of things coming up. I'm going to Portland, Oregon next week and I will be out there for the weekend for the big anti-Antifa march um, on their doorstep. After that, I'm coming back and going straight to Texas for Texans Against Radical Islam. I have a whole speech about that, and I will be laying into them about that. And then after that, I'm going to come back and go straight to Miami to the Trump Doral to speak for Priority America. So I will see you guys out and about, and um, wish me luck, and thank you guys so much for helping me out with my crowdfunding, and I will continue to be doing so, and, and I will continue to let you know everything that's going on with my journey. And let's stop the racism. If you, it doesn't matter what race you are. Everybody who's American needs to speak out against this white hate. So I bet you're wondering why and how I blamed Candace Owens for all of this white hate, but here's how and why. <laughs> I love Candace Owens. If you know me, I love Candace Owens. She inspired me to want to take the gay approach the way that she took the black approach, the way it was like, wow, the left really keeps us down. Well, the left really uses the gay people in the same way that she noticed that they're using the black people. Now, um, I love Candace Owens to death, but she is taking away the black vote from the Democratic Party. They need at least 85% to stay afloat with the black vote. They don't have that. That's why they're going towards illegals and criminals for the vote. Let's be real. This is the name of the game for them. So Candace Owens, since you take the black people from them, they are mad. And what they're doing now is they are saying everybody is white, racist, and not white nationalist to try to get that black vote back. Owens, you're succeeding. I love you for it. And keep going, girl. But damn it. You are the reason why they are trying everything in their desperate power to get back the black vote. Thanks, girl. <laughs> but um, I love that everybody is waking up. All we need to do is all those black people that walked away from the Democratic Party, stick with us. Us white people are not evil. We are not bad. And we are not separated from you. Me and you both, if you're on the right, then we realize we are Americans and we are brothers. So let's go on in this country and keep taking it. But what we need to do is knock those freshmen out of the House. And they want to get the Senate. They're not allowed to have the House under the Senate. 
We need to make sure Democratic Party is gone. That word Democrat should have been abolished with the word slavery. Why? Because they were the ones who brought it. They were the ones who fought against ending it. They were the ones who fought against ending segregation. They're the ones who fought against women's rights. And they're the ones who keep us separate as they separate us still to this day. And if you are a black conservative or a gay conservative, you know we are treated today like the Democrats have always treated us throughout history. I'm down for bipartisanship. I love the Green Party. But the Democrats have lost their minds. It's time to fight back. Don't let people hate people that are white. Don't stay silent if you see it. I don't care what race you are. We gotta let people know how evil the Democrats are and always have been. Thank you guys. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. And like I said in every video, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks, Candace. Damn.